Hello everyone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, my name is Anderson Duboff. I'm a cloud management engineer from Brazil. So uh, hope you guys find time to go Brazil. I know the Amazon rainforest is burning right now, but it's a nice place. We have other stuff going down there. Yeah. So uh, we're here to talk about uh, Kubernetes observability and uh, fundamentals about monitoring, tracing, and stuff like that. So let's get started. So um, fill out the survey, whatever. So we all see a lion, a lion has power, has a voice. So the developers, the same thing, right? They can be influential. They are not the decision maker, but they can influence influences and they want speed. They want to be able to deliver, to consume, and to see things fast and the most fastest way possible, right? So we are down to the conversation about monoliths and microservices. So a monolith is an application that puts all its functionality into a single process. And a microservices architecture puts each element of functionality into a separate service. So when you have to scale a monolith, you have to scale everything, and when you have to scale a service, a microservice, you just have to scale that service. So uh, looking at my monolith application here, I have a search, deliver, payment, inventory module, right? So if I need to persist data, I have a database. So if I need to scale that monolith, I need to replicate everything. Like if I need to scale my big rock, I need to scale, I have, have to have two big rocks of that, right? So let's break my monolith and see how things go from there. So. My microservices are here. I start building out. That's a container now. That's a, another container. There's another container. And now they are talking on the network, right? And if they talk in the network, they have an IP. But before that, they may own data too. What is that? Because everything was persisting on the database, but maybe some service needs persist data too. And now they have a database. And now, as they have an IP, they can uh, receive connections too, so I can interact directly to them. So when I have a bunch of those, there's a network of service, that's a challenge, right? Because now I have more places to look, more infrastructure to cover, so that's a challenge. So microservices is distributed computing at all. I have a service that talks to another service on the network, that's it. And there are some fallacies on the distributed computing. So I, the network is reliable. Yeah, always reliable. So latency is zero, right? So bandwidth is infinite. So topology does not ever change ever, right? So there's one administrator for everything. Transport cost, transport cost is zero and the network is homogeneous. Uh -huh. So when I have something like this, and I, have a, and I have a failure, so what happens? I have more stuff failing, so I need to monitor. So my microservice may look something like this. So I have a switch that I flick it and nothing happens and I flick another one and I don't know, three lights go on and that's my microservices. So uh, Google has a really nice book about site reliability engineering that has an awesome chapter about monitoring and talks about four signals, the golden signals. So whenever you have a team uh, taking care of a <coughs> service, you have to uh, think about uh, their lives because they want, don't want to be on call all the time, right? So when I want to call my team to act on something, I want to leverage those four golden signals. That is latency, right? Traffic, errors, and saturation. So easy, right? But why monitoring? So detect and prevent outages, easy, right? Everybody knows that. Entry price for cause engineering. If I want to do cause engineering, I need to be well aware of that. So how is scaling? Now we're talking Kubernetes. How do I do HPA? So HPA, a horizontal pod outscaling. How do I do pod outscaling using external metrics to Kubernetes and optimize costs and performance? So I have three pillars in observability. I have metrics, tracing, and logs. So what is metrics? Metrics are data combined from measuring events. That's it. Tracing are recorded events with casual ordering. So we have an order, order when you're looking at tracing. 
and logging is recording events, right? So there are different levels of monitoring and different approach to that. So an infrastructure level, what I have, an application level. And I use use to do infrastructure level and red to do application level. And I'm gonna go deep on that. Infrastructure monitoring, so a use method is very easy. For every resource that you have, check utilization, saturation, the errors. That's it. So when we are doing infrastructure monitor, I use the use method, and that's it. If I'm doing application monitoring, I use the red method. What is that? For every resource, oh no, for every service, check request hate, error rate, and request duration. And that's when you introduce something like the service level objective of that. So I'm gonna go that. But watch a monitor. Request time, rate, if it is fast, it works. Yeah, you have to be kept monitoring that. So connections, health check, database, pods, Kubernetes pods. Uh, I don't know who is using Kubernetes here. Nobody? Oh, so yeah. In production, uh, yeah, no, I'm joking. <laughs> so there's a thing called crash loop back off. Yeah, if you start using, you're gonna see it, don't worry. So Kubernetes internal, it has so much components that we have to look up. Control plane, the kubelet, and infrastructure. That's the basic that, that we always do. Disk space, CPU, RAM, and saturation of network. So what is an SLE, SLO, SLA? An SLE is server, service level indicator indicator, so X should be true, right? A service level objective is a, that Y is a proportion of the time. So I want that to be how percentage of most of the, my time. So a service level agreement is something like or else, yeah? So uh, when we some, look something like this, we can use Wavefront to be the first panel of glass for all metrics by all teams. Analytics, anomaly detections, dashboard, logs and metrics. So we can go microservice, application telemetry, container monitoring, infrastructure telemetry, custom telemetry, and public and private cloud. So we can use Wavefront for something like that. So that's it. it was a quick session, right? You guys have any questions? No? Thank you.